Hey everyone, Prince here. This is going to be a somewhat short video talking about uh, the news we just learned on Thursday, April 15th, 2021, that a total of 10 wrestlers had been released from WWE. And what fired up this, or what heated up this news story was that it happened on the one-year anniversary of Black Wednesday, where back on April 15th, 2020, uh, it was reported that multiple wrestlers, agents, and backstage personnel from WWE were released. And that sparked a huge outrage, huge controversy, especially considering that the report said that WWE cited that it was cited that WWE um, went through with those releases due to budgetary cuts, even though it came out that it was complete bullshit since they were doing record high profits, if I'm not mistaken. And it sparked a huge outrage, but for the most part, it looks like that a number of the people that were released have been able to go find a new job for themselves in other promotions or in other fields. So, hopefully there is a happy ending for each of these people, especially considering that that, that happened during the really, really early stages of the pandemic, like three months in. And it was completely fucked up, and it really pissed off so many people, myself included. Here, it's only 10 wrestlers, all of them being wrestlers, and a lot of these um, people weren't really of much note in the WWE, especially since some of these were in catering or really not, not participating much in the um, in storylines or angles or anything like that in WWE, so it's not as, you know, devastating as last year, but that doesn't make the pain or make the, the sadness... Uh, any less palpable, but yeah. Uh, so among the 10 wrestlers released include Samoa Joe, Peyton Royce, Mickey James, Mojo Rawley, Chelsea Green, Tucker, Wesley Blake, Billy Kay, Kalisto, and Bo Dallas. So I'll talk about Samoa Joe last. I'm going to go through all these other people. And yeah, I think some of these were surprising. Um, you know, surprising names to be released. You would think they would be brought back to participate in WWE in some form or fashion, but obviously that didn't happen. Uh, so let's go through them real quick. So first up, I want to talk about Mickey James. Uh, I don't think she's been on television for months. Like, the last match I remember hearing about was that title match with Asuka back in the fall. Uh, the one where I think she apparently got a concussion or got injured or something like that. So to see... Mickey get released, it is sad, but I think the silver lining is that there is a possibility she could go to NWA to join up with her husband, Nick Aldis, and possibly participate with the women's division there. If that's not the case, maybe she could go to AEW, maybe she'll go to she'll go back to Impact. Either way, I really do hope Mickey can find her footing uh, since WWE has basically wasted her and she hasn't really meant much in the company since the partnership with Alexa Bliss back in 2018. So hopefully she's able to find her feet after this release. Uh, next up, I want to talk about Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. Uh, Peyton, I think it's most likely she could go to AEW to join her husband, Sean Spears, possibly join the women's division, which I wouldn't really be against. Billy, I think I was more surprised by her release than Peyton's, mainly because Billy was actually uh, somewhat active within the company as a comedy character over on SmackDown. And honestly, I really was digging her comedy act. It was really entertaining. She was likable. The whole thing with the resume was hilarious. She was also one of the best parts in terms of entertainment uh, over in the Women's Royal Rumble match back in January. So I'm kind of surprised, especially considering she was at WrestleMania 37 Night 1. You would have think that she would have stayed around with the company, but no, that actually ended up being her last match with the company. Uh, which is a shame, because that was easily the worst match in the show. But hopefully she's able to find her feet. Um, in terms of Peyton Royce, I'm not really sure what direction they were going to take her with anyway, because she wasn't really doing much of anything on Raw. I mean, the most notable thing in her run recently was that really good promo she cut on Raw Talk. I think it was back in, like, February or, or March. It was really good. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's really good. Uh, really solid promo. I thought that would have helped her out, you know, if she had the buzz from that promo as, like, The Miz did on Talking Smack a few years ago, or any other promo you see on the recent episodes of Talking Smack, you know, widely publicized, I think this would have helped her out a little bit, but no, they didn't do anything with her and they released her, but 
I think, again, similar to Mickey James possibly going to NWA, you, you could say there is a possibility that she could join up with her husband, Sean Spears, in AEW. Um, however, that might not happen for a while because I forgot to mention that it was reported that they, all of these people uh, were given 90-day no, 90 90 no-compete. So they can't really sign with any promotion until July 19th, if I'm not mistaken, which is a shame because you think that with these releases, especially with Samoa Joe, that you would have seen Joe sign with another company by now. But we'll go into more detail about Joe in a little bit. But I think um, Peyton and Billy could go to AEW. I mean, if Tay Conti could, you know, be released last year, join AEW, join up with her best friend, uh, Anna J, and not only get better in the ring, but get a lot more over with the fans, to the point where she's actually going to be facing Hikaru Shida this week for the Women's Championship, and that match being a really, mostly highly anticipated matchup, uh, I think it's possible Billy and, and Peyton could go to, to, uh, AEW and do that, especially with, um, sharp coaching and, um, you know, seasoning in the ring, because let's be real, neither were really that good in the ring. But I think with proper professionals training them and giving, uh, it's possible these two could get better and possibly do something in AEW with the women's division, especially since the division has been really heating up the last few months, uh, starting with that uh, number one contenders tournament. So hopefully they're able to do something over there. Chelsea Green, Chelsea Green, you know, really big shame for her because uh, she tried to make her debut over on Raw, but then she, uh, what's it called? She tried to make her debut on Raw a couple times, but then she got injured uh, a couple times in the past. So injuries really prevented her from really, you know, blooming in WWE. Uh, she seemed to be the kind of person where maybe she could have done something in terms of personality, but obviously that didn't come through. So there is a possibility she could go to um, Impact or maybe uh, over in AEW as well with Billy and Peyton uh, to join her husband, Matt Cardona, because I don't know if he's signed with AEW, but they're doing like this talent exchange thing uh, with uh, Matt Cardona being an impact right now, you know, doing a storyline with Brian Myers. Maybe she can go to either company. So either way, I think she could be in good hands, hopefully once she recovers from her injuries. But yeah, uh, there's that one. Um, let's see. Um, let me get two of the, the lesser fucks given people, I guess you're going to call them that. Uh, Tucker, Mojo Raleigh, and Bo Dallas. I mean, they haven't really, or sorry, which one? Mojo Raleigh, Tucker, Wesley Blake, and Bo Dallas. Those four guys, nobody gave a fuck about. Let's be real. I mean, after Tucker turned heel on Otis back at Hell in a Cell, it was like, that was like the death of his career, if I had to be honest. I mean, it went nowhere. He was just jobbing out week after week, and then he went to catering, so... Yeah, I have no idea where he's going to go after this. Maybe on a smaller independence or somewhere else. Who knows? Um, Rojo Raleigh, I was kind of surprised by. You'd think that she would be... <clears throat> or, or you would think that he would be active with the company. You know, sort of like a roster filler of sorts. But no, they released him. And I don't really care about the guy. And I'm not saying that to be an asshole. I'm saying that as a performer, I never really cared about him. Nor these other three guys that I'm going to mention or have mentioned. Um... Wesley Blake, after the whole Jackson Riker thing where uh, Jackson was uh, showing his support for Donald Trump and they basically got buried on Twitter by Kevin Owens, I mean, that was like the end for him, really. Yeah, you know, Wesley being part of the Forgotten Sons, you know, that was over. So, you know, can't really comment on him and I don't really care. Bo Dallas, he was a decent talent for for what he was um asked to do, but he never really bloomed into any sort of significant character beyond the B-team and working with Curtis Axel, another second-generation talent. So, kind of sucks for him, but hey, you know, he is dating Liv Morgan, so there's some positives for him, you know, some silver linings, but I don't really know where each of these guys can go. They'll probably go to a uh, small independent promotion, maybe they'll just retire and go do something else, or maybe they'll go... Um, to a bigger company. I mean, either way, nobody's really going to be like, oh my god, it's Tucker and AEW. And by the way, I just want to mention, you know, the fact that conversations always pop up when it comes to people that get released from WWE or released from another promotion or what have you, the conversation always pops up like, ooh, maybe they can go to AEW. Not everybody has to go to AEW, okay? They are not the only company in town. Are they the biggest promotion in North America outside of WWE? 
Yes. But does that mean that they're the only game in town? No. There's the Independence. You have GCW. You have Impact Wrestling. You have Ring of Honor. You have other smaller promotions all throughout the country that are still somewhat active. These... AEW is not the only game in town, so stop acting like that's going to happen. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's some people that are going to be championing for other wrestlers to go to, you know, other companies around the world because they're going to be more either more utilized or better utilized or going to be a much better fit elsewhere. Like with Andrade, I don't want to see him go to AEW. Will he do bad there? No. But will he get lost? Yeah. I mean, remember the hype when Miro went to AEW back in the fall? What the fuck have they been doing with him? I mean, seriously, that's what I don't want for a lot of these people to get lost in the shuffle in this big roster that the company has right now and to be doing little to nothing or anything of worth. That's my fear. That's my little rant right there. So the next time you hear anybody say, oh, this guy's going to go to AEW, that's bullshit. There's possibilities. I mean, Peyton, Billy, and Chelsea Green are possible people that could go to AEW legitimately. Maybe you can argue NWA as well. But... Don't act like AEW is the only game in, in the United States. Yeah, WWE is overtaking, you know, you know, the wrestling world. But they're not the only game in town, nor is AEW. You have independence. You have promotions in Japan that maybe some wrestlers would like to go participate in. Who really knows? And then, finally, and then we have uh, Kalisto. Don't really know much of where he'll go. He could go to maybe AAA or CMLL in Mexico. Maybe he can go join uh, New Japan with their New Japan Strong Show over in Los Angeles. Maybe he can go uh, elsewhere, maybe another independent promotion. I don't really know, but, you know, after the whole, you know, Lucha House Party split they did back in the summertime, I mean, where were they really going to go with him? Really nowhere. He wasn't going to be a tag team champion. He wasn't going to be an uh, intercontinental champion. Uh, the fact that they didn't put him back in the cruiserweight division was pretty stupid, but... Aside from that, yeah, I feel bad for Kalisto because he was a damn good luchador for, you know, the small few occasions they tried to push him. But, yeah, it was pretty clear after that infamously bad promo he cut a few years ago, it was just a matter of time of, like, what were they going to do with him? You know, whether they were going to release him or, or, you know, keep him in smaller role or what. But, yeah, hopefully he's able to go do something elsewhere. But, yeah, finally, the main event, Samoa Joe. Definitely the most disappointing release of the bunch because you would think Joe would stick around a while longer because, if anything, out of all the people that were released, he was the guy that you think would be somewhat protected or would be still given some sort of work to do within WWE because he had been in NXT for, over, for nearly two years. Uh, he became the first two-time uh, NXT champion. Uh, he made it SummerSlam 2017 and main evented um, Great Balls of Fire. Great Balls of Fire with Brock Lesnar. Uh, he competed for the WWE Championship with AJ Styles. He comp and Kofi Kingston. He was the United States Champion. And yeah, injuries got in the way. But if you take away the injuries, you know WWE just didn't really utilize him to the best of his abilities. He could have been the champion at some point but again probably because of the age because of his age and the injuries probably that prevented him from excelling in the company but even then he was the nxt champion and granted the way that nxt was formatted you know he could you know he didn't have to be there every week but yeah you know every position and every uh, opportunity that joe was given he excelled he was great battling for and was the NXT champion throughout 2015 and 2016 into early 2017. Uh, he had some kick-ass matches on TV and on pay-per-view. Uh, he was a damn good United States champion for the brief amount of time that he was battling for the belt for about, throughout the spring and the early summer. Uh, he had some great. He had a great feud with AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. A great trilogy. Uh, what was it? A trilogy? Yeah, a great trilogy for the championship. Uh, not going to count Crown Jewel because that was. Uh, last minute, um, he was really good. He's United States champion, I mentioned. And then when he um, stepped away from the ring because of injuries and went to do commentating, he did great. And he added a lot more legitimacy and credibility uh, as a commentator and was really entertaining to listen to. I mean, he was he, he he's really underrated on the microphone. So, yeah, Joe could have definitely excelled in whether he was going to return to the ring or he was going to stay in commentary and quietly retire. Yeah, you know, Joe could have stuck around, but no, they released him. Now, 
where he'll go and what he'll do, it's not a guarantee because unlike a couple years ago, you know, unlike a couple years ago when he was active with the company and he was the United States champion and everything like that, you know, it's not like you notice that he was still that he was capable of still going in the ring. So if he was released in 2019, I think the conversations would have been huge. Like, ooh, he could go to Japan to be a part of the G1. Maybe he can go to AEW and join up and you know add some credibility to that company. Uh, whenever they really, whenever they get their uh, television deal, maybe he can go to Ring of Honor or go back to the Independence or something like that. It's not a guarantee right now. If anything, but if there's two companies I want to see him go participate in, I would say it's New Japan and Ring of Honor. I don't want him to go to AEW. The only way I see him going to AEW is if he's a commentator, which no disrespect to him, but maybe he could do some like, you know, sideline commentary with them, you know, doing AEW Dark or AEW Dark Elevation. Um, because if he's going to be part of the company, they need a put him in a big position right away. I mean, hell, if he was allowed to go to the company right now and wrestle, you know damn well they could have probably put him up there, put him in the ring with Darby Allen. But again, they can't do that right now because of the 90-day no compete. Reason why I say Ring of Honor and New Japan, and I'll get to New Japan in a minute, but I say Ring of Honor because he could do some stuff and add some credibility and legitimacy to two mostly fresh new champions that they've had in Ring of Honor, you know, Roosh as the uh, pure ch uh, world champion and Jonathan Gresham as the the pure champion. I mean, who, who knows? Maybe he can do some stuff as uh, challenging for the TV title, which would be a kind of a little bit, you know, low for him. But hey, who knows? You know, he was a pure champion and he was really good as the champion in 2005, you know, you know, with what Jay Lethal has been doing in the pure division and everything in the tag team division. Uh, he could add some credibility, so him versus Gresham for the pure title over the summertime would be pretty awesome, especially if they do Death Before Dishonor around August or September. So, yeah, I would love for Joe to go to Ring of Honor, but if that's not possible, I would say send him over to New Japan. Why do I say that? Well, again, 90 day, he can't compete, right? But there is two options for him. One is that if he does end up competing, but he's not able to do so right now, maybe he can do English commentary for uh, for New Japan from home. Because if you've noticed, a lot of the commentary for New Japan's uh, for Eng New Japan's English commentary has been recorded. If I'm not mistaken, has been recorded from home. You know, Kevin Kelly, Chris Charlton, uh, Gino Gambino, all these guys have been recording from their homes. They haven't really had the chance to travel to Japan to do commentary for the company that much or really at all. So it is possible that it, if they want to bring in Joe, he could do English commentary with Kevin and all those guys at some point. But if not, maybe there is the possibility of New Japan Strong. Why do I say that? Because Joe is from California. Some, uh, New Japan Strong tapes in Los Angeles. What prevents him from you know wrestling there or even being part of commentary there? Especially since recently they announced the... Uh, introduction of a new championship, the New Japan Strong Championship. Considering John Moxley is the IWGP United States Champion and it's not really competing for the uh, for the brand really that much or at all, really at all, you might they might as well have brought in a new championship, which I was really happy that they did. The final of the New Japan Cup USA tournament is going to be coming up this Friday. I think it's going to be Tom Lawler versus uh, Brody King in the final. I mean, who knows? You know, if Joe was able to compete, and if Tom Lawler stays as the champion. Who knows? Maybe Tom Lawler versus Samoa Joe for the championship in the future. That could add some credibility to the company or th th some credibility to uh, to the TV show. I mean, when Moxley had that match with Kenta back in February, there was a lot of hype for that match. You know, Moxley's a big star. So when he had that match with Kenta, there was a lot of anticipation and it delivered. So... Who says that Joe can't really participate with New Japan in some form or fashion? So, yeah, long video of sorts. You know, fuck the whole uh, somewhat short video comment I made earlier. But, yeah, I really do hope all these people are able to find their footing and uh, participate in something big in pro wrestling or, or still participate in wrestling in some sorts or find a job or a form of income for themselves. Uh, throughout the next few months in this part process, but yeah, um, I just wish nothing but the best for each of these people in their future endeavors. So, 
Wish them luck, guys. If you want to support these people, you can go check out their merch links, or you can go follow them on social media and see what they're up to. Hopefully, they're able to land on their feet in the next few months, because, you know, it's not 2020, but we're still living in a very tough time right now. So, yeah, go support your favorite wrestler, and until the next video comes, guys, peace.